Hey, Steelers Nation, it's Joe Rocky with the Pittsburgh Syndicate coming at you here today. Lots of running back news happening both on the channel and with the team, obviously. So earlier in the day, I released every single run that Najee had that was six yards or longer. I hope you guys enjoy it. But part of the reason that we did this here was because on Sunday, yesterday, um, Roberts, the new linebacker here, trying to make a name that we mentioned in yesterday's episode, um, reportedly used an unchurchable towards Najee. And I wanted to bring out a couple of facts about Najee in this episode, as well as talk about some of the minor depth chart things that are also going on in the running back room here in Pittsburgh. But to begin, obviously, with, with Najee. So his style is never going to be fast Willie Parker or Le'Veon Bells or even James Connors, quite frankly. He's a different kind of runner. Of that group, Najee Harris is one of the most old school runners the NFL has had in forever. Um, in a lot of ways, he's reminiscent of a thin Bettis. He has led the league in touches since he's entered the league. He gets the ball continuously. And he's never going to bust out the 60-yard run. It, 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 that's just not who he is. He's not that speed guy. But what he is, is he is a power and get the job done running back. Now, what a lot of people hear when they think about the whole running back situation and what's going across the NFL is that anyone can do it. No one, no worry about it. Draft the guy anywhere. Well, the reality is, is that just is not true. If you look at any legitimate top 10 ranking list, which ESPN just let theirs out based upon what the general managers and scouts said, Every single one of the top eight were either a first or a second round draft pick. You have to spend draft resources if you want a quality running back. That's a fact of life. So the notion that we can just get anyone anywhere and replace Najee is foolhardy. The guy creates leverage and power in a way that very few do in the NFL. Also, as I've brought up many times in my dismay-unbelief-unacceptability of the coaching staff, the Steelers ran into more eight-man boxes than any other team last year. That's going to affect a running back that isn't an elite speedster. He can't run around the edge. In part, that's what makes Warren look so much better because they are a contrast to each other, and it's a really good thing that they are. Najee is a huge human being. He just is. Warren, it'll itty bitty little guy, and he runs with a Napoleon complex. So I love how both of them run. Warren runs like he's trying to kill someone every single play, but does it in an intelligent way. You never see him giving up ground in an attempt to try to make something bigger as sometimes happens with punt returners, for instance. Warren is always pushing downfield and unafraid of contact. Najee is the exact same way. He's just better between the tackles. So specifically, what Roberts was calling Najee out for was running with his head down. And anytime you're doing anything in football, your head being down is bad. End of discussion. It's just a fact of life. So on the one hand, I think it's something just to recognize that Roberts has always been that kind of person every stop in his career. And he's also trying to make a name for him in what just became a very competitive linebacker battle. And I, again, I'm not writing Alexander off as an instant bench start. I don't think that's the case. So I really think it's going to come down to the flashes in camp. And one of the ways to do this before you're allowed to wear pads, which, by the way, does not start until tomorrow, it's you can't really tell how someone is performing as a linebacker until they start tackling. It's a fact of life. But it's also true that there are basic power and technique things, such as running with your head up, finding the right holes, that can make anyone improve. Najee's entering his third year. And last year, quite frankly, was kind of stolen from him. He wasn't really healthy 
until the bye week. And when you watch the footage of him from last year, which is in part why we released it, you can clearly see that. He got much better at running as he got healthier. He does amazing things in the open field. He, I think he tries to hurdle people too much, but that's because, you know, I don't want to ever get hit down there and you leave yourself exposed when you hurdle someone. So Najee Harris is probably the most underrated stealer in the city, the exception maybe Johnson, strictly based upon how much negativity people give to him. He embraces contact. He carries the load, and he quite frankly gets the job done very well. He's never going to be Willie Parker and break the 68-yarder and set the Super Bowl record for the longest run. It's not going to happen. He's going to be an accumulator and a volume runner. But when you have a rookie quarterback, and clearly the Steelers' goal is to win with defense, you need to be able to control the ball. Najee is that. And on the side note, Johnson isn't. Remember, 90% of the time the ball is thrown in Johnson's direction, the clock stops. That's not how you build an offense. So as your most active targeted receiver is stopping the clock, Najee is keeping it rolling. And that is the absolute best thing for the defense and therefore for the team. Controlling the ball and being better in the red zone are the two tickets this offense can do the most to make this team win. And we've broken down in previous episode the specifics of that. I did those last week at this time. But what we need to remember for the point of this video, Najee is going to be a stealer here for at least this season and two more after it. And there is no reason to just get on the, the anti Najee bus. He ends up carrying the ball and being a workhorse. I do think we need to frame him for what he is. I think at the end of the day, we look at this appropriately. He's the younger Bettis. He might be big and bulky and look physically like some other running backs that aren't Bettis. But at the end of the day, that's his style. Where are you down? Where are you down? Where are you down? And by the way, the Steelers front office has fully embraced this style. Look at every single draft pick dash signing they have done on offense. Huge mammoth people to help with the run. That's what Broderick is first and foremost. That's what Matt Washington is. We are leaning into the run. And I believe it's a good thing for this team. Because as you can successfully realize, hey, Kenny, we're going to push you down the field further so there's less people in the box while still handing the ball off aggressively, that's how you take these carries and have them start raising three quarters of a yard, a yard per carry. And then people are going to look at Najee in a different light. Remember, one of the absolute best things about Najee, he is in the top two in the least amount of times per given the ball, which means on average, when I give you the ball, he is the second least in the NFL of being tackled behind the line of scrimmage. He is a man that does not give you a negative play. And that by of itself is a huge thing when you're dealing with a younger quarterback. Everything about Najee is what you want for the situation of building a nest. He's a guy who plays through injury without any questions asked. Many people in the NFL do not do that. He is a guy that produces while he's hurt. Even less can do that. And he takes the ball game in and game out with the most amount of touches since he has entered the NFL. Najee Harris is going to be an elite player. He is probably going to be close to leading the league in touches again. And his offensive line has gotten dramatically better. The entire left side of it. Even if Moore starts week one until the bye, Moore's a better run blocker this year than he was this time last year. And you also can see that in the film moving on. Moore got much better at blocking as the season progressed. So Steelers Nation, if you have not already watched the Najee Harris film that we released here earlier today, I invite you to do so. But the other running back news that I did want to cover coming out of Steeler Nation 
was that one of the running backs that I hit earlier in the year in a conversation about the depth that we had the position, Alfonso Graham took a shoulder injury, again, without wearing pads, um, that's going to take him basically out for camp when it's all said and done. And it's very unfortunate, um, but it, it's a fact of life. And when we look at the Steelers already reporting about who they're going to be bringing and talking about, Zaquan J. White from the XFL looks to be the front runner. I mean, guys, let's be realistic. We can make stories about who's going to be the XFL darling. The likelihood of that guy making the team is basically nothing. I mean, I, I'm just being real. There's 53 men to make the roster. If we're keeping four tight end, counting Connor as the fourth tight end, you're already losing a spot at the running back position or at the wide receiver position. I doubt they keep less than five. So the running back room is going to be the one that gets hit. And that means you're only keeping three. And in all probability, we know who they are. They're Najee, they're Warren, they're McFarlane. And that's probably the way it's going to go. So while this is a nice and cute story, not to poo-poo everyone's efforts about trying to talk about a guy in the XFL, the XFL is night and day. This is like single-A baseball compared to the major leagues. I mean, it's just the way it is. And to think that that he's going to come in and, and take actual nausea is just asinine. Um, and I know that there's a radio station right now trying to push that. And then again, it is asinine. So Steelers Nation, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Click subscribe if you haven't already. And if, uh, also, if you haven't checked it out, check out the Najee highlight film from last year. See you tomorrow, guys. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go.